Hello, and welcome to Central Coast Poetry Shows, and I'm your host, Jim Russo. My reason for producing this show is this. For about 10 years, I've been reading and attending poetry readings all over California Central Coast. And during that time, I've had the privilege of hearing and seeing some very talented poets read their own words. This show is to be a platform for those poets to be seen and heard by you. We'll be producing two 30-minute shows per month with two poets per show, and each poet will have a short conversation with eight minutes of uncensored open mic. Now I'd like to introduce and tell you a few facts about my first guest, Diane Lee Mumi. Diane has lived and worked and wandered around, excuse me, Diane has lived and wandered around US and Canada, and now digs her gardener's hands in California's dirt. A regular reader at San Francisco Bay Area poetry venues, Diane has published prose and poetry, most recently in Mezzo Camin, Peacock Journal, The Road Not Taken, Nature Writing, The Sand Hill Review, California Poetry Quarterly, Censura, and Red Wheelbarrow, and has been nominated for a Pushcart Prize. She won first prize and an honorable mention in the sonnet category of the 2016 Soul Making Keats Literary Contest and first prize in the creative nonfiction category of the same competition. Diane teaches poetry and appreciation and storytelling through Foothill De Anza College's Adaptive Learning Division, offering off-campus classes for students with disabilities. Diane has published three books, Figure in a Landscape, Silk Road, and Iron Bird and Place, under her own imprint, Days Eye Press and Studios. Diane is also a watercolorist, a collage artist, and an experience that both sees and is seeded by her poetic imagery. And now I'd like to introduce you to Diane Mumi. Diane, thank you for coming. Oh, Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Thank, thank you. you. So tell me a little bit about uh, what you're up to. Um, the most exciting thing for me this season is uh, co-hosting the Coastside Poetry Reading Series in Half Moon Bay. Mm -hmm. We meet on the second Tuesday of every month at the Cafe Society at 522 Main Street. And I think they're going to flash a, um, a URL on the screen at this point so right. um, people can go and see all that. We have two features and an open mic. And um, we had our first of this season last month and it went really well. So we're really excited about um, about upcoming ones. We have some great readers scheduled for the next season and hopefully we'll just keep going. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you're bringing all the poets in uh, Half Moon Bay out to, out to the real world. Well, um, we're just looking everywhere. Uh -huh. Yep, yeah, um, poets from the Half Moon Bay area. Um, and San we had our we had the poet laureate of Reno at our first one oh um, last month. So, Good. yeah, Good. Um, so it, it's really exciting. We're getting to hear great stuff. Outstanding. Yeah. So, what else would you like to speak about? Um, well, the poetry appreciation classes that I'm offering through the uh, the Foothill De Anza, uh, it's mostly with uh, uh, folks in assisted living facilities, so older folks, mm -hmm. and I prepare an hour, an hour and 15 minutes uh, worth of poetry. I just take it from everywhere. I, I ask for recommendations and, mm -hmm. and for favorite things and all that. but. Um, I just read and invite comments. Um, hopefully, some will actually want to write some of their own poetry. But uh -huh. but right now, it's just um, so so gratifying. To, I mean, I get to spend an hour and a half or two hours every week hunting up great poetry, thinking, what would they like to hear? <laughs> yes, this one. No, not that one. No. Outstanding. <laughs> it's great fun. It's wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm, I appreciate it. I'm sure everyone does in the community. I think they do. Now, let me ask you a question I try to remember to ask all my poet uh, guests. Of all the poems you've ever written, do you have a favorite? Well, my current all-time favorite, yes, is Brie. And it's it's a love poem. It's kind of an invocation, and every time I read it, good things seem to happen. So oh, I just well, keep let's, let's, reading uh, it more and more. Let's continue. Okay. okay. Now uh, I'm going to ask you to step to the podium and read your poem. Okay. And if you would read that poem first, I will. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Diane Mumy. <laughs> B. 
brie. I'm opening a brie for you. I'll set it where its shoulders, creamy, firm, will slump into the warmth of afternoon. And where what breeze there is today will carry news of Brie out to the highway where you may be driving. Yo-Yo Ma is at full volume now, in case you're walking by. And I've opened the Neruda to the verse that seemed to summon you the time before and read aloud its final stanza twice. Read aloud his final stanza twice. And I have trimmed the ivy cut the spent camellia blossoms, swept the brown ones from beneath the pots that cluster near the door where surely you will knock and bring a poem like you did before. Black Friday at the Ocean. Some of us have chosen not to heed the siren call of myriad malls that grace our land and cluster now atop the shaggy bluffs by pillar point, tide pools below. Above's an opalescent sky whose tender grays I might essay with watercolor, between the auburn wings of hunting hawks. We're families and strangers walking off debauch of yesterday, perhaps, that day of too much roasted bird, of good red wine, some of us accompanied by hounds plumper than they were on Wednesday, dogs made round by treats dropped quietly beneath the crocheted edges of white tablecloths. Gifts of obligation for the season, still waiting to be found, or were bought this morning on browsers by early risers deep in second cups of coffee, or may be bought this evening when sandy shoes are set beside the back door, laptops opened, dogs collapsed in gratitude beside the fire. Later. For now, bright finny boards are ferried up and down the crumbling slopes. A girl in yellow tutu climbs a cypress tree, and seekers of shellfish forage on the rocks following the tide, which Today will reach its nadir at 2.22 p.m. exactly. Barley, corn. That was the summer we danced naked rings around the silo they never used. Our beads, our smoke, our rented farmhouse and island corn waves tickling our shoreline, danced naked while the growers of corn flew low and dusted. That spring, Ralph Palmer and his son had harrowed up, furrowed down, put 100 acres into barley. It was early, and winter, not knowing its place, returned for four days, plunged the red line to 30, to 29, to 31. Barley dies at 28, and on the third day, Ralph's heart stumbled and fell. His dog barked all night. That was the summer we ran naked between the cornrows, ate his fingerling ears, thought, it's feed corn, not table corn, thought, the cows won't know if there are a dozen ears short. That's what we thought. Ralph lived on, and so did his barley. That was the summer we danced naked on the lawn, and I wondered when Ralph Palmer had last danced naked on the lawn, before corn drew his life into neat furrows, into terrible furrows, when or if. Wondered if corn came to him in his cradle, if Barley tapped him on the shoulder at high school graduation and said, come with me, boy. That sometimes happens. Barking all night. They'll bark the stranger bark, those hounds. Nip the heels, send trespassers flying. Yip the yip of a trodden tail, or a welcome. Where the woof have you been all day? They'll bark all those they will, 
we will, and wag as well. But then, oh yes, then one day comes the long bark, all night the long bark, baying, savoring the rumble in the throat, the chest. The long bark, Lord save us all from barking the long bark, from giving voice across the winter bare fields, in vacant rooms, all night, barking all night because the road is empty and there's nothing else to do. Suburbs. Wild things come down from dry hills to land on roofs, and a ginger cat slinks beneath a hedge. Somewhere in the village, a staple has worked loose from wire netting. Rabbits, restless, rustle their bedding, and wild things come down from the hills, take cover between garage and garbage cans. On a patio, drip lines curve from pot to pot. Celadon frogs cross cracked earth to slide beneath the aspidistra. Roses vine between houses. Black-tailed deer take refuge. Wild things watch from the dark beneath porches. Chickens seek the safety of the street. Thirty below. Beneath the borealis, we are wrapped in down and dacron, glove in glove. Our love tonight's an argument about intent. You name this radiance divine. With rapt attention, point out heaven's lights and speak of Gabriel enthroned above the pole. Angelic trumpeting, a shimmering that knows itself and you. I must critique and speak of plasma and electrons blind as stones on pavement. Senseless proton, photon, solar winds, and on I talk. You balk. We're kept apart by more than gloves tonight. I think I'd give the whole of what is mine to hear a single word from your divine. And now I'd like to tell you a few facts about my next guest. Magdalena Montaigne has been leading poetry writing workshops for almost 20 years. Most recently, in conjunction with libraries in Santa Cruz and Santa Clara counties. She produced and hosted the popular Poetry Circle Poetry Reading Series at the Watsonville Public Library for three years, 2012 through 2015, which she will be returning in 2018. Magdalena has been facilitating poetry writing workshops for seniors in assisted living facilities in Santa Cruz, Monterey, and Santa Clara counties through her Wisdom Verse program since 2012, and has been a guest workshop facilitator for several Santa Cruz County area nonprofits, including the Homeless Services Center, Casa of Santa Cruz, Monarch Services, formerly Women's Crisis Support, and Woman Care. Magdalena also currently teaches memoir writing and editing workshops at her home in Corlitas and offers classes on various aspects, <clears throat> excuse me, of writing and craft at Catamaran Center for the Literary Arts at the Tannery Arts Center in Santa Cruz. She has taught with California poets in the schools in Santa Cruz, Pajaro Valley, and Siskiyou County Unified School Districts and has also worked in various educational capacities on California Poets in the Schools annual anthology of statewide student poems. She is the county coordinator for the Poetry Out Loud recita recitation, <laughs> recitation Contest for high school students in Santa Cruz County since 2014. Her first book, Earth, My Witness, will be published next year by many names in press. And now I'd like to welcome Montaigne. Montaigne, Magdalena Montaigne. Thank you, Magdalena. Thanks, Jim. We've known each other for quite a while, and I do know your name. Uh, if you can just tell us a little bit about what you're up to lately. 
Um, well, a couple of exciting things. My book, um, which is a long time coming, um, yeah. and its current title is Earth, My Witness, so I've been getting my poems together, and um, hopefully that'll be out um, next year. It will be out next year, Many Names Press. Um, so that's exciting. And then the return of Poets Circle mm -hmm. at the Watsonville Library. Um, instead of doing monthly, we're going to be doing it mostly quarterly, Mm -hmm. um, evenings of um, featured readers and open mic um, so stay tuned for that and people can go to my website um, to find out information because we don't have all the dates or the um, readers completely um, confirmed yet mm -hmm. so there's that and then I'm also doing um, all this work uh, with the assisted living facilities and um, it's very exciting I've developed a curriculum which I'm trying to um, sell to um, the management of many of these um, facilities where I work so that um, I can get poetry to um, more and more people in assisted living um, because it's just um, it's a wonderful thing yeah um, yeah so keeps them sharp keeps them sharp it keeps them connected um, yeah. it's a really beautiful well, um, it's always wonderful that people give people the tools to express themselves yes yes yeah. Yeah. So and give them this space. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. That's been really fun. So anything else? Anything else? Um, <laughs> the po um, uh, Poetry Out Loud, uh, the high school poetry recitation contest. Um, this is my fourth year being the coordinator for the county. And it's been kind of a slow start, but I think this year we're probably going to have like five high schools competing. And it's a wonderful program. The students are, are so um, amazing. Um, you can go to YouTube and look up Poetry Out Loud and see some of the past winners. It's a um, program that's been going for about, I think, 14 years now, but only the past four years here in Santa Cruz. So Outstanding. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you what I ask all my guests. Uh, of all the poems you've written, do you have a favorite? Well, right now I have a favorite. <laughs> okay. um, and it's called The Day After My Mother is Buried. Ah. Okay. Well, I'll ask you to step to the podium, and if you could read that poem first, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Magdalena Montaigne. <laughs> this is a, um, a poem. One of the reasons why this poem is my favorite is because um, I took it to a workshop with um, Joseph Millar, and he... Um, basically said uh, it needed a lot of work and the ending at the time was not about um, my mother's um, death, although she had already passed, but it was about one of those um, incidents uh, where a young black man was stopped in a car for just a routine, um, something lights out uh, in the back of the car and then was shot and um, uh, the poem starts out um, with me at my house in um, Coralitas and seeing this beautiful, um, just beautiful scene of all these deer. And then I sort of tacked on the, the surprise of, of, of hearing about the horrible incident. And um, Joseph Millar, who was workshopping the poem, said, you can't do that. That has to be another poem. So I kind of threw the poem away. And then as I was trying to get my poems for my book together, um, I thought, you know, I like the beginning of that poem. And so I sat with it a while and I realized that the poem was really about grief. And um, so that's where my mother came in. So this is long intro. This is the poem. The day after my mother is buried. I wake to the sight of six adolescent male deer, their antlers beginning to bud out. Stalwart brothers in undulating procession heading toward my yard. They move peacefully, silent as pallbearers, as if rehearsed, sidestepping each other. They look to the garden fence they could easily vault over, provocation of swollen tomatoes and sweet peas on the vine. But they move on toward the meadow and the brambles as the day stretches out her arms, thin and fragile through fog. I'd follow them too if I knew I could leave my grief in that open field, along with half-eaten blackberries, delicate and bruised, juice still dripping from our open mouths. 
The second poem I'm going to read is a sonnet, and I had been writing poetry for a long time, but I had never written a sonnet until I um, taught a class at the Catamaran Center on Forms, and I was teaching sonnets, so I thought, well, I guess I have to write one. And it's called Sonnet for My Tormentor. I envy the broad sweep of the owl whose nocturnal destination is joy escaping nightmares gray and lonely scowl, the silent chase of an unchaste boy. He pinned me to the darkest plot of earth, my lovely soul distracted rose above. The likes of him so hurt and hurt and hurt, releasing me to sorrow, a mourning dove. What happened in a room too small to stay, coy his moves, his giant unmade bed. I erased him with a bigger world each day. Wished him, wished him, wished him dead and dead. I'd almost forgotten the flesh and kick of it, the orange cat a flash of memory lit. Cried the whole time, brought me back unfit. Um, the next poem uh, we'll read is a poem about my father, and um, it's about growing up on a, a farm in New Jersey and um, Saturdays. It's called Conflagration. On Saturday mornings, my father burned our garbage at the edge of our 40-acre farm, down by the graveyard of old bottles of Coca-Cola and Mountain Dew. I like to watch him work the deliberate strike of the match, and then the sharp flame leapt up, like our German shepherd nipping at the postman's heels. I liked how the heat curled the labels inward so that I could see the words Miller's, Budweiser, and Chef Boyardee shrivel finally. The blaze turning crimson to indigo, then yellow again, and the week's newspapers reduced to ash almost instantly. He seldom spoke but for an occasional stand back. Dumbstruck, I listened, never asked a single question. I understood the chore was solemn, unbearable, fighting back the wooded brush, cutting a deep circle out of the earth to keep us safe, contain the conflagration. Sometimes the wind would kick up, then smoke would snarl acrid in our faces, the smell like burning rubber burnt remnants like whirling dervishes before us. When it got too hot to stand it any longer, I'd back away, half watching, still curious. My father, Prometheus with a long-handled shovel, sweaty and serious, staying with it until the last spark diminished. He'd be out there sometime until mid-afternoon, long after I'd gone inside my room. This was slow business his thirst for absolution, his labor to make us clean and whole by Sunday morning. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. I'd like to read a poem from my book titled The Sway of Color. The title is Oil. I can't take it anymore. I know it will happen to me. I know they are listening. I know they will read this. Our children will never play in the sunshine. They will never know what a farm was. They will never visit the seashore. They will never leave their home without their masks. We should have fought harder. We should have not have cared so much about our stuff. We knew the truth. We knew it was wrong. We were such cowards, self-centered cowards. Wind farms, solar farms, we could have fought harder. We saw the wars for oil. We knew soldiers who died. We knew they were lying. I'd like to read a poem from my book titled Kids Ruled. It's titled Drones. An ancient neighborhood of children, families, and friends now red flashing GPS coordinates on a computer screen. Exploding fiery bombs plunge into their homes. 
human beings dying violent deaths, broken concrete, hemorrhaging gore, crimson blood drips from the arms of, a, of an infant, broken bodies, dismembered pieces, punctured and leaking the last of life, plaster embedded with body parts, black blood pooling on floors, blown apart, blood-stained glass and steel, fires burning, bodies scorched to charcoal, creaking and collapsing roofs, faint groans of the, of the agony before death, the computer is turned off. Gone is the laughter and children's voices, the innocent, the not guilty. I'd like to read a poem from my book titled, I Want to Hold Your Hand. The title is, It Takes a Village Idiot. Ever wonder who CNN polls? I do, because it's never me. I did some research and discovered their list, the list of people they call. It's people who regularly correspond with convicted postal workers, people who seem to only eat cat food and crackers, people who are now or have ever been members of the Roy Clark fan club, people with no chins in their immediate families, people who name their children after soap opera characters, People who have been vacationing in Branson, Missouri since 1953, waiting for something to happen. People who canceled their subscription to Field and Stream in 1982 after they printed the word organism. People who believe that in heaven the french fries are bigger, refills are free, and for some reason the pickles are sweeter. And people who have been members of Jenny Craig for 25 years or longer. Thank you for tuning in to Central Coast Poetry Shows. My name is Jim Russo. Come and find us again. Thank you and good night. I'm beating up the street tonight. I slept through the natural light. But I'll do it if it feels all right. All right. All right. Nothing to